Look at that. See that soil slick? Isn't it? Isn't all that oil? Look at that. Come on, Ashka. Yeah, you can smell it now as well. It's a difference in the layer. You see it's coming all the way there? There, there's the slick. Yeah. You, there, you see the difference coming from the ship all the way? That's a slick. This is an image that comes from a satellite. It shows a ship, and it shows the path of oil behind that ship. Aerial surveillance shows an oil slick in the wake of a ship. This is evidence of a crime. We've focused on catastrophic accidents when it comes to pollution, but the real story, the real crime, is not a mistake. International dumping of oil occurs on a much larger scale. Intentional harm is a much bigger threat that flies under the radar. Two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. It's our planet's wildest frontier, breathtaking as much as it is vital to all life. A place of discovery and endless reinvention, a metaphor for freedom, as well as a profoundly dystopian realm where the darkest of all humanities play out. Over 50 million people work at sea, and human rights and environmental abuses often occur with impunity. Six, of you. Six people we are sleeping in there. So hot. This is, un I've never ever seen this bad. My name is Ian Urbina. As a journalist, I've spent the past decade reporting from this lawless frontier. I run an investigative journalism organization called the Outlaw Ocean Project that reports about crimes happening in this space. This is the Outlaw Ocean. Launched in 2004, Caribbean Princess epitomizes style and grace. Midship Deck 5 is home to the Piazza, the heart of the ship, where you can mingle with fellow passengers or enjoy a wealth of activities, including live entertainment and a sidewalk cafe atmosphere just beyond. Cruise ships sell luxury, freedom, and escape. But beyond the dream, they are supersized floating cities that impact the oceans in hidden and often catastrophic ways. The idea that the biggest of them all the richest of them all, is deliberately violating the entire maritime regime designed to protect the oceans, that's a big deal. Large ships burn the dirtiest fuel on the planet, and they are bigger polluters than the aviation or car industries. It's hard to think of any other industry where there's an environmental crime that's so prevalent, so common. But there's money to be saved by flushing waste into the sea. From bilge to black waters, the sewage of thousands of passengers flushing their toilets several times a day. And sometimes they even resort to the magic pipe. This is what's called a magic pipe. It's uh, got the oil-soaked rag that was on the ship. And it's still, if you're sitting in this room, it still smells like oil. Why do we call it a magic pipe? Because the oil magically disappears. Good morning. A whistleblower discovered the elaborate workaround system on Princess ships three years ago and alerted investigators. The ships were using a so-called magic pipe to divert oily water and then dumping it illegally into the ocean. Investigators charged the cruise line had been dumping thousands of gallons of contaminated water for at least eight years. Whistleblowers are all too rare, but in this high-profile case that hit headlines, someone was willing to speak up. One of the crew members, a fitter, was asked to build a bypass system, and he refused at first. He was threatened with his job. 
He was so angry about having to make the pipe, he created a little black book, and then he recorded every time that they dumped overboard. The Caribbean Princess, owned by Carnival Cruise Lines, was issued a record $40 million fine in 2016. In 2022, it pleaded guilty for a second violation of probation. There's nobody out there on the high seas. There's nobody out there after dark except the crew members. And it does take the courage of one of those people knowing that they may not ever work again in their chosen profession to come forward and to report violations of law. The young whistleblower never worked on the high seas again, and magic pipes continue to exist. Deliberate pollution from ships occurs every day. It's a virtual epidemic. The practice of dumping waste at sea was perfectly legal for most of maritime history. Dilution is the solution to pollution, was even a scientific mantra during most of the 20th century. The more toxic the waste, the more likely it would end up at sea. From weapon dumping to nuclear testing, oceans would absorb all. Often the waste that's in the ocean wasn't even dumped in the ocean at all. It was dumped on the land, it was dumped in the beach, it was dumped in rivers. I mean, everything drains into the ocean. What's crazy is that awareness of waste is growing, but so is the waste itself. It's not just sewage, wastewater, and malfunctioning septic tanks that end up in the sea. In the last year, studies found 58 different types of medications in ocean samples from heart drugs and opioids to antidepressants and antifungals. Less than 1% of total materials that we pull out of the earth is still in product or use six months later. That means 99% of the stuff that we are mining, logging, harvesting, um, extracting, 99% of that is waste in less than six months. And that is just no way to run a sustainable economy. For millennia, the assumption was that the ocean could absorb and metabolize all, regenerating endlessly. Today, we know this is absolutely untrue. Oil companies compete with each other in taking the petroleum molecule apart and rearranging it into fabrics, cosmetics, weed killers, a whole galaxy of things. We need an environmental design revolution to take some of our everyday products like plastic out of existence. This pilot whale is stranded, starving to death. If the team leave it, it will drown. It cannot eat because its stomach is full of plastic. Rescuers know this whale won't be the last. With 8 million tons of bags and bottles clogging up our oceans, more animals will die. Recycling is one step, but it's not a long-term solution. Its impact is minimal. Globally, it's less than 9% of plastic that has ever been produced has actually been reprocessed. That means that 91% of all the plastic that's ever been produced, that is millions and millions and millions of tons, 91% is either buried in a hole in the ground, burned in an incinerator, or is in the ocean. It is dumped somewhere. Scientists estimate around 3 million tons of microfibers now pollute our oceans, even reaching Antarctica. Every second breath we take, we owe to our oceans. They clean the air and stabilize our planet's temperature. Their good health is fundamental to surviving climate change. The oceans might be vast, but they are not indestructible. More than any other crime in the outlaw ocean, waste spewed into the waves will eventually affect us all. Mm -hmm.